Hey, welcome to Jumpstart. I wanna give you a quick walkthrough on how to use Jumpstart to create a new Rails application with a bunch of goodies set up for you already so you can focus on building your app and your business instead of setting up Bootstrap and fiddling with all those little things that you have to do on every new app. So um, before we get started, I wanna mention, if you go to jumpstartrails.com, there's a subscribe box at the bottom that you can add your email address and get email updates for whenever we add new features and some stuff about the new Jumpstart Pro that we're working on so that you can have a template that already has SaaS subscription payments and team support and an API kind of built out for you out of the box. So you can really get started um, building your business right away without having to fiddle with all of those basics. So to use Jumpstart, you're going to click Get Started and go to the Jumpstart GitHub page. And down here in the README will be the latest instructions. So if any of this has changed since I've recorded this, you'll be able to see those instructions here. Um, the requirements for Jumpstart are pretty simple. You're going to need Ruby installed, of course, uh, Bundler, Rails, Yarn, and uh, Foreman is optional. And you want to install that um, using gem install Foreman. It doesn't actually need to be something that goes in your gem file anymore. The other thing is uh, you'll probably need to install Redis so that you have that uh, running for caching and action cable and that kind of support and you can just simply grab this line right here to grab uh, the jumpstart config uh, template from github and run the latest version of it so you can also clone this as a repo if you would like to your local machine and use that but um, it's easy enough to just go ahead and paste this line into your browser go ahead and change the name for your app and if you would like to use a different database, go ahead. But we're primarily recommending Postgres because of things like JSON support um, and other features like that. And you can even use Postgres as the backend for your Action Cable PubSub, which is super cool. So then you can go ahead and run the installer. This will create a new Rails app and then apply the template to that. So the things you'll see here are it installing a bunch of other gems. We're gonna install Administrate for admin interface, Bootstrap, Devise for logging in, and Devise Bootstrap to make it styled with Bootstrap. Uh, Devise Masquerade, which is going to allow us in our admin to impersonate users. So if you need to do customer support or debugging or something like that, you can go and log into someone's account and figure out what the problem is. We also have Font Awesome SaaS so that you can add your Font Awesome um, icons anywhere, friendly ID for any resources that you want to have, not the database ID in the URL, but something friendly. This is really good for blog posts and other things like that. We have Gravatar image tags so that we can have avatars really easily using Gravatar by default so that you don't have to have users upload images for their avatar and they already have something. We have mini magic for processing images, name of person to handle users' names and splitting a name field into first and last name. Omnioth, Facebook, GitHub, and Twitter. Um, those are kind of optional, but the ones that we often see being used. So we have those installed. And Sidekick for background processing and the sitemap generator for um, building sitemaps for SEO and whenever to handle um, doing cron and other background um, tasks that need to run on a schedule. So that is all the dependencies that we have plus Webpacker. So Rails 5.2 gets configured with Webpacker and Rails 6 already has that. So then we go and set up all of that and move your JavaScript over to Webpacker. So Turbolink, Stimulus, and those other things will all run in Webpacker. And you won't use the asset pipeline for your JavaScript using Jumpstart. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Um, then we're going through and installing everything, configuring Webpacker and all of that good stuff. And once you're done, um, you get some instructions here at the bottom. You can CD into your application. And if you have Foreman installed, you can run Foreman Start. This will run your Rails server, Sidekick, and the Webpack dev server to reload your JavaScript whenever it changes. So that is it to get up and running. This is running on Rails 6 in this example. Um, so we didn't have to install Webpacker, but Rails 5.2 will go and do those extra steps to make it compatible with Rails 6 to make the upgrade from Rails 5.2 to Rails 6 a lot easier as well. So um, that's how you get started. And to take a look at your application, it is pretty straightforward. We have our app JavaScript folder 
Inside here we have our PAX application JS. This includes all of the JavaScript to set up um, Webpacker with all of the good stuff. So we have local time as well. That's another library that allows us to display um, times that are updated in the current browser time zone. So whenever you display a time, it is not displaying whatever's in the database. It's displaying something relative to the user. Super handy as well. We have action cable set up, active storage, turbo links, Rails UJS, and the bootstrap JavaScript as well. So all of that is configured for you. Um, we have the controllers and dashboards for whatever models are in your application. So right now, the administrate models that we have are the user and announcements. Announcements are a feature that you can use to broadcast you know, new features or updates or fixes that you've added to your application. So let's just dive in and take a look at the application that we have generated. So you can either run Rails server to spin up your app and then sidekick in a separate terminal, or you can use Foreman to start everything up in one terminal like I mentioned before. This will slightly change the port number. So if you use Foreman, you go to localhost 5000. If you use Rails server, you can go to localhost 3000. And this will also spin up that Webpack dev server, which is optional, but something really useful for modifying JavaScript in development so that it automatically reloads everything for you. So just run that command and then you can open up your browser and go to localhost three or 5,000 depending on which um, server port you are using. Once that has loaded, you'll be presented with your welcome screen to your Jumpstart application. So we have placeholders for a terms of service page, privacy policy, and we have a what's new section, which is those announcements that I mentioned before. So once you go into your admin interface, you can go and add announcements in and they will show up here. And for now, we can go ahead and create a user. So we'll say user is Chris Oliver, Chris at GoRails.com, and my password will just be password. So that will sign me in, and now I have access to my user account settings here and other things. Now you can go and add your scaffolds or your other models and controllers and things like that. And then you can easily drop in to your nav bar to actually go add links to that. To do that, you will pull up your uh, navbar.html.erb partial. This has a little snippet here at the top for masquerading. So when you're logged in as another user, you'll have a little bar saying, hey, you're logged in as someone else. And in here, you have this section right here for the left side of the nav bar, and then the right section here um, is the bigger UL, and you can add links in there to that. So that is all you need to do to modify your nav bar. We have designed the application layout to render a handful of shared um, things so that you can create new layouts and easily include things like the head so it's consistent between all of those. If you decide to maybe display no nav bar, or no footer, or something like that on your login screens or whatever, you can go and design your own layouts without having to replicate or duplicate a lot of this stuff. So you have a section for nav bar, a section for notices, and a section for footer that you can modify out of the box. And all of that is set up correctly for you. One thing I wanted to mention in the head is that we are using the JavaScript pack tag to load everything from Webpacker and your application style sheets actually come from the asset pipeline. It's kind of the recommendation from uh, Rails is as things go forward in Rails 6 to use JavaScript for uh, Webpacker and then style sheets go in the asset pipeline still. You can also add the style sheet pack tag here if you want to include say styles from Vue.js or React or whatever that you might have in your JavaScript. So go ahead and add that if you need that as well. And the last thing that we want to show here is the admin interface. So if I pull up the console, I can go to any user. So we'll grab the last user because that's the one that I just created. And we can update them with the admin as true flag. So this is a flag that we've added to denote whether or not a user has access to the admin area. So once you add that, um, Boolean to the user, they can visit the admin area and you will have access to all of your models here. This is using administrate behind the scenes and you can use that to create new things like announcements or just view the users that you have in your database and so on. So with announcements, we can go ahead and create a new announcement, a fix or an update 
you can define when um, it was created and then you can say um, launched our product and uh, today is our launch launch date everyone sign up now so if you create an announcement like this what's cool is you will be able to see uh, this show up in the nav bar automatically so you'll see this red dot now next to what's new that shows that the user hasn't actually read one of the announcements that's been added and so when they click on that, they'll be able to see this and the red dot will go away because they have been marked as red. So we keep track of that on the user model and determine the last time they read these notes so that we can display whether or not there's something new since they last checked. And you can add different types and there'll be uh, different colors here for the different types that you have. So that is an introduction to Jumpstart. Uh, as the Rails template exists right now, we'll probably add some more features to this, improve some other things, and Jumpstart Pro will be coming out very soon. So take a look at jumpstartrails.com for information about that. And uh, add your email if you'd like to get updates to this as we improve things um, down the road. Until then, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.